2024 is off to an insane start in the world of AI. Starting with the Midjourney V6 release, to Tesla's new video of Optimus folding a shirt, there have been so many news stories it's been hard to keep up. And that's not changing anytime soon because we just got a brand new interview with Sam Altman that has confirmed that OpenAI is working on GPT-5 and its release may not be that far off. For those of you that don't know, there is currently being held in Davos, Switzerland, the World Economic Forum, where the world's richest and most powerful people gather to discuss things like economics, technology, and now AI. Or if you ask a conspiracy theorist like me to discuss the one world government. But we're not going to get into that today. Instead, I want to break down a new interview that Sam Altman did with Axios in which he drops a number of huge bombshells including that OpenAI is actively working on a new, more powerful model that is all but confirmed to be GPT-5. But before we get into that guys, welcome to my channel TFC Tech, where we discuss fascinating topics surrounding AI and other new technologies. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and help the channel get to that 10k mark, and consider leaving a like to help this video get out to others. And without further ado, let's get into it. To start off, I want to give a bit of context and set the backdrop to this interview. Like I said in the intro, this interview is being held at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, where many of the world's leaders in business, finance, and tech all gather each year, with AI being one of the hottest topics here. Some officials are afraid of a rogue superintelligence killing humanity, while others believe that AI is a sort of limitless potential key to an era of abundance. You have both sides of this coin in attendance here, with Sam Altman standing as perhaps the largest icon in the artificial intelligence space. Now with this backdrop, he seems to play to both sides and include some cautionary tales, as well as promises of grandeur in what he says. And there's a lot to unpack here which we'll get to, but to start off, let's talk about what he has to say about developing a new model that is rumored to be GPT-5. I'd love to talk about sort of all the specifics, but the, the general principle, I think the thing that matters most, is just that it gets smarter. So. GPT-2 couldn't do very much. GPT-3 could do more. GPT-4 could do a lot more. GPT-5 will be able to do a lot, lot more. And, and the thing that, or whatever we call it, and the thing that matters most is not that it can, you know, have this new modality or it can solve this new problem. It is the generalized intelligence keeps increasing. And we find new ways to put that into a product. We find new ways to use it. But that's, that, that is the higher order bit. I think that dominates everything else in the importance is that the overall capability of the model its overall intelligence, its ability to do longer, more complex problems, more accurately, more of them, that is increasing across the board. And that to me is one of the few things that make this totally different from any previous kind of technology. And let's talk kind of this year, what we can expect. Do you think most of the gains will come from new, more powerful models or the fact that we now have so many more people developing on the models for this year? That's a great question. Um, I mean, obviously it'll be the multiplicative factor of both. But if history is a guide for us, it is the more advanced model that is the most important step forward. So, so this was in direct response to a question asking him what we can expect from OpenAI this year. Now, if you remember back to last year, we had a lot of rumors floating around from people like Sikui Chin, who said that they had been told that GPT-5 was scheduled to complete training in December of 2023. Now, the fact that we're in January now does not disprove this whatsoever. Because just because the model might be finished training, it doesn't mean at all that it's ready for release. On GPT-4 alone, OpenAI spent months and months working through what's called the model's alignment, meaning its alignment to OpenAI and society's values. This alignment is to ensure that the model is safe to release and won't be used, at least in the best case scenario, for nefarious purposes like creating a novel chemical weapon or what have you. And to corroborate this, OpenAI actually filed a patent for GPT-5 back on July 18th of 2023. So without a doubt, it is coming. It's just a matter of when. Now this brings us to another point in the interview, where when asked about deploying these models, he highlights that OpenAI believes in the importance of iterative deployments, meaning spacing out the release of new technologies so that as he puts it in his words, the world can wrap their heads around it. It should come as no surprise to anyone that he would say this, because as we've seen with every past iteration of ChatGPT, there is always a drastic shock to the public that takes months to get over. And even now, being almost a year out from GPT-4's release, I finally feel like I've got a grasp on the full potential of the model. 
But another thing that this statement suggests is that they have internally more powerful technologies that they're waiting to release. So for now, we have word that OpenAI is in fact working on new, more powerful models and that they will likely release this year, according to this interview. But that's not the only bombshell that we got today. I'm going to reference an article that pretty well covers what was said in the interview, and I want to highlight a specific point that Altman brought up. He says he believes future AI products will need to allow quite a lot of individual customization. And that's going to make a lot of people uncomfortable, because AI will give different answers for different users based on their values preferences and possibly on what country they reside in. Now there's a lot to unpack here. Obviously, I have no issue with the personal customization of AI, and in fact, I think that's a great step towards having something like AI personal companions. But the issue arises with the values preferences statement. Regardless of how you feel about AI right now, it's inevitable that we're moving towards a world where the casual search engine like Google or Bing is dying, and people are turning towards artificial intelligence to find information. Whether for better or worse, AI will be the arbiter of truth in the very near future. And when talking about something that could potentially become a super intelligence, we need to ask ourselves just how much objectivity should it have for the collective versus the subjectivity for the individual. Now if that doesn't make much sense, let me explain. The polarized state of social media right now is a great example of what I'm talking about. Depending on whose Twitter you open, you will get a very distorted version of reality that has been specifically curated by algorithms to reinforce that person's worldview. And we can already see what kind of division those algorithms have caused in society. So when it comes to extrapolating this value curation to something that could potentially be a super intelligence, I can only hope that it doesn't add more fuel to an already raging fire. But with that being said, I'm very curious to hear what your guys' opinion on this issue is, so let me know what you think down in the comments below. Now to end this video on a positive note, I want to highlight another point that Sam brought up, which is that maybe not this year, but in the very near future, AI advances will help vastly accelerate the rate of scientific discovery, but he doesn't expect that to happen in 2024. Quote, but when it happens, it's a big, big deal. Here on the channel, we've talked a lot about the future of AGI and how through a benevolent superintelligence, we could be ushered into an era of abundance as Elon Musk calls it. And that's something that I truly believe. When we finally create a model that is as smart as the smartest physicist and as intuitive as a natural born genius, the possibilities truly become endless. Through the power of AI, we could eventually unlock the secrets of something like efficient nuclear fusion or viable room temperature superconductors. Basically anything such an artificial mind could conjure up. We just have to build it. I know it's easy nowadays to talk about the doom and Armageddon that could be brought about through AI, but I think we all need to shift our mindsets and realize that this tool can be extremely powerful and extremely beneficial to the human race as a whole. And I hope that through advancements like GPT-5 when it comes out, and what's beyond it, we can shift our mindset to one of abundance and start embracing AI for what it can do for us. But that's going to do it for the video today, guys. I hope this got you excited for the inevitable release of GPT-5, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. If you think about what it means for the world and for people's quality of lives, if we can get to a world uh, where the the cost of intelligence and the abundance that comes with that the cost dramatically falls the abundance goes ways up goes way up i think we'll do the same thing with energy and i think those are the two sort of key inputs to everything else we want so if we can have abundant and cheap energy and intelligence that will transform people's lives largely for the better and i think it's gonna in the same way that if we could go back now 500 years and look at someone's life we'd say well there, there's some great things but they didn't have this they didn't have that can you believe they didn't have modern medicine that's what people are going to look back at us like, but in 50 years.